Number four, your purpose and assignment. I won't speak quick, so much there. There are only three keys I will give you here. Discovery, refining, and deploying. That is the key to working in purpose. I refer you to the book, Discovering Your Potentials by Dr. Miles Monroe. Then I refer you to my teachings also on purpose. I've done a number of teachings on purpose. But here's what I will tell you. You are as fulfilled to the degree to which you discover, refine, and serve with excellence. Make sure you pray that you'll be taken as part of the School of Ministry students. By the way, soon we'll give the announcement for the next session. And make sure that you start praying right now. Prayer works. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that you are absorbed. And there you have an opportunity to learn, learn very strategically the matters of purpose and destiny. But the key here, a rule of thumb, is that you have to discover. It's been there. You don't invent your purpose. You discover it. You were sent with it. And there are many ways to discover it. Number one, the use of your potentials. When you discover your potentials, potentials are pointers to your purpose. I would always say it this way. If you see an individual holding a stethoscope, what do you call that individual? A doctor. When you see an individual holding a knife, and I mean um, um, a hammer and a nail, that person is called a... Thank you. You see that now? So you can use your potentials as pointers to your purpose. Number two, prophetic revelations and confirmations. God comes to you in dreams, visions, prophetic confirmations. Number three, a byproduct of service. Sometimes service in the house of God is how you really discover what he's put within your heart. Right? So this is just a summary. When you discover your potentials, even if you don't know where you are taking it to, the next thing is to contend to refine it. To refine it. Oh, God has given me the ability to speak. You refine it. God has given me the ability to sing. You refine it. God has given me the ability. I have very high intellectual acumen. Refine it. And then, when you refine it, begin to serve. Look up, please. The easiest way to begin to serve your purpose is the house of God as a worker. Are we together now? Philip started as a welfare person. But he eventually became an evangelist. The Bible acknowledges him as an evangelist. But he started with welfare. From there he discovered his place. You can start as an usher and eventually end as a mighty apostle. Because as an usher your gift will now be seen. And one day they will say lead a small prayer here. And they begin to discern the hand of God upon your life. Gradually you begin to scale. Proving through faithfulness that God can take you higher and higher until one day he will now commit to you your own work. That's how it works. Let's go to number four. Very quickly. Who is learning tonight? The roadmap. I won't talk much about finances. Number four or number five now. Am I right? Number five is your finances. I wish I had time to drum it. I hope I will take one of, I promise you, it's a promise I'm giving you. Between now and when Koinonia is done, we'll talk about this money thing one more time. Maybe one of this week will come and just touch it again. Are we together? Because this finance thing is not something you hear once and understand. It's a very stubborn subject. You need to hear and hear again. And file this area, file that area, file that area. Finances, the, the teaching of finances comes with a lot of pride because most times people hear it and say, you mean it's this simple until they try it. Then they find out that they were trying to hold water with their hands. Everything just went out. There is a skill to it to make it work. Are we together? But generally, I will tell you this. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. You prosper to the degree to which you are favored. You can rest on that. You prosper to the degree to which you are valuable. And you prosper to the degree to which you are favored. The two principal keys that control wealth and abundance is value and favor through relationships. Take this as a rule of thumb. Value, turning your gift, your ability to products and services, packaging it with excellence and serving it to a targeted consumer base. You call that business. We call that value. Are you seeing that now? The degree to which you are valuable, serving solutions that are needed and useful. The reason why certain professions look more profitable than others is because they solve greater, weightier problems than others. Are we together? If a doctor and a carpenter 
an architect is here most likely the doctor will have more clients because humans are prone to being sick faster they need health solutions better than even a housing solution are we together now so when it has to do with prospering there is a spiritual side to it and listen to all of my messages that i've preached around finances but i must tell you this if you are not valuable and you do not refine your value and serve it with excellence i hate to be a bearer of bad news you will be poor or you will not be sustainably wealthy there's a lot of superstition around wealth especially as proposed by the church and it's the reason why a lot of non-christians are laughing and mocking and spiting the church because it looks like our entire theology about wealth is centered on giving and giving alone while giving plays a very major spiritual and even psychological role to wealth it is not limited to giving alone principally value there are spiritual laws that connect you, but I've taught you here value. The degree to which you are able to serve products and services that are needed and useful. Are we together? This mic was bought. This pulpit was bought or fabricated. This Bible was bought. This phone was bought. Are we together? The dress that I'm wearing, somebody put this together. Whoever was part of this value chain has had a portion of our finances. It doesn't matter whether the person was a Christian or not. Are we together now? That's how it works. Immediately after service, you are going to a restaurant or you are going to cook at home. The one you bought food from, you paid. The one you are going to, whose restaurant you are going to, are we together now? That person will continue receiving your money provided they are providing value. And then the second angle to it is favor through relationships. Question, when a millionaire gives birth to a son, what business solution did the boy solve to prosper it's called inheritance it's not called profit it's called inheritance are we together now eventually his inheritance can be transferred to profit but at the time it is called inheritance so relationships are very powerful anybody you sell value to can reward you but the person that likes you too can bless you it's not called reward but it's still money reaching you and that's the most important thing now when god really wants to power your life he grants you access to do both that you are both valuable and he connects you to strategic profitable pro destiny relationships it doesn't keep you lazy but it becomes an acceleration for you there are many people who relationships can give them capital and wisdom can help them do business with the money and they begin to scale if you ask them how were you blessed they will tell you both relationships and value don't depend on relationships alone it is the way of a lazy man even if relationships give you resources it is wisdom and learning how to transact that grows your resources but if the only thing you know is how to transact value your your growth rate will be very slow are we together now because transaction from an economic standpoint is tampered by many nuances many biases relationships are a great leverage in life don't ignore them i am a product of the financial blessings that have come from relationships largely relationships are powerful are we together now you can build a house you can own an estate you can have a, a property whatever it is but by the time you transact there are people who have written books it has blessed them there are people who have sold their materials their intellectual property it has blessed them some of you here make clothes my assignment is to release grace on what you are doing if there is nothing you are doing releasing financial grace on it is profitless are we together lazy people shout amen with empty hands visionary people carry their value up and receive blessings on it when people are lazy they just shout amen for what what are you going to do now say nothing all i know is that somebody will not sleep We need to be careful are we together now there are others who truly believe that they won't do anything in this life just because they love jesus somebody must give them his house his car his clothes pay their children's school fees while they just sit down and say god is faithful is the way of fools i'm sorry to say but it's the way of fools even as a man of god i don't expect that kind of result that you are immune by priesthood but I still believe that my hands are blessed. My mind is blessed. 
that favor will come but I will not abuse the grace of God is someone learning now in the name of Jesus the spirit of laziness around your life I curse it right now Amen. hear me if you are troubleshooting your financial problems the first area to go to is whether or not whether or not you are valuable are you valuable then to who if you are only valuable to yourself you are flattering yourself because you cannot pay yourself you will have to serve that value to another outside of yourself and if the person does not need the value you carry then unfortunately there will not be a reward some of you are valuable enough to be commended not to be rewarded are we together we can clap for you for the value you carry but it's not exceptional enough it's not refined enough it's not packaged enough value must be translated to productivity productivity is when value is translated to goods and services that are now refined served with excellence to a targeted consumer base then you are rewarded not just commended and then favor through relationships i have taught you sincerely so that the easiest way to prosper is through relationships who hates you does not matter i will say this to you endlessly but who likes you matters may someone like you before december yeah. enough to contribute to your financial laughter yeah. are we together now i expect blessings from favor every day including finances i'm saying it without shame i'm saying it without any sense of apology are we together but then after you check the issue of value check the issue of relationships now let me tell you this i'm not teaching you to be parasitic in your relationship or to say you you are poor you can't be my friend apostle i've thought that prosperity comes from relationship i found out that I've, i have too many poor people around me that's mm, don't do that because the person you are laughing at today god can exalt the person but i will tell you one truth i will tell you one truth I will tell you one truth when you are transformed your relationship to rise to match your transformation if everybody around you is poor i'm telling you sincerely i'm not insulting them but it's a report card to how your thinking is you can steal the contact of a rich man from somebody's phone call the person and see whether he'll pick your number the fact that he's not picking your number means he does not recognize you. You have not gotten to that realm. So rather than embarrassing yourself, contend by light to a level where those who you call great today will also call you great. Is someone learning now? Yes. I didn't even know when the contact in my phone changed, quite honestly. It was not something that was intentionally done. And I can't remember deleting the old ones, but I can't find them. That somebody you desire will be the one to collect your phone and say, let me type my number to be sure you are there. You see, everybody blesses according to his riches in glory. If somebody is poor, he cannot bless you. You get what I'm saying? He may pray for you. He may intercede for you. He may wait upon the Lord for you. But as far as financial blessing is concerned, you will not get anything. Let me tell you sincerely, don't waste your time. It is wealthy people that can help give you the leverage of wealth. It is a truth. It is a truth. Pray for everybody to be around your life. But in this season, pray for quality people established by the mercy of God that they will look upon you with kindness and extend benevolence to you whilst God helps you to solve their problem too. These are very uncomfortable truths, especially because you are saying it in church, but the truth is still the truth. A poor man can pray for you, but a poor man cannot help you financially. Are we together? If everybody around my life is poor, I will just believe I'm sent to them. And I'll start praying for my real helpers to come around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you believe what you're hearing? But then I will tell you this. And even if this is where we stop tonight, that is still fine. There is a grace that prospers. There is an anointing that prospers i've proven it with my life it is true 
if it's something someone told me you can say ah you are just talking nonsense but the things we have seen the things we have heard by the mercies of god the things that our hands have handled are we together now honestly speaking believers hear me there is a grace from heaven that comes on the head of a man and redefines your financial possibility and for someone tonight whilst you are seated quietly in the name of jesus like the dew of Hammon, in addition to the value you are providing in addition to the strategic relationships you are at a point in your life now where you need help that men cannot give it will take the god of heaven showing you mercy otherwise you will wake up early in the morning you will sleep late in the night you will rigmarole the doors of destiny even the doors of value and it will still not work for you i pray for you now wherever you are provided you came here with hunger this grace that can help men that becomes a, a an accelerator to your your financial journey may that grace rest upon your life may that grace rest upon your life may you become a financial wonder in addition to your value in addition to relationships may that grace rest upon you oh, oh, oh rest on me oh, oh Rest on me, oh, 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 oh. Hallelujah. The goal of the teaching tonight is to connect desires with outcomes. It's like a spiritual troubleshooting. Are we together now? I'm running for you a list so that you will go back as you are listening. This is what mentorship is about. You can now examine what area of your life that is not working. I wish we had time for me to touch a bit on relationships, but we have to pray now. But relationships are very vital. Some of you are alone. You are lonely. Nobody to help you. You know many people, but you did not connect to them. Listen, the one who helps you is the one you connect to, not the one you know. You can know the person, but if you are not connected, help will not flow from them to you. Are we together now? I know this senator, you may not be lying, but you will never receive help from them. I know this man of God, knowing people does not benefit you relationally. You must learn how to connect. Connect. And the way you connect, let me tell you this. Live tonight knowing that relationships are investments. The same way you do real estate, you do oil and gas. My brothers, my sisters, relationships are investment. It is fraud to want a return over any investment you did not do. Are we together? When you are catching 419ers, catch those who want a return from investments, they did, relationships they did not invest to because it's fraud. It's amazing how many people do not invest in lives. They just show up and want a stake. No, it doesn't work that way. If you were not there when I'm crying, when you see me smiling, rejoice from afar. Don't come near me. Are we together now? You can earn a living believing in people. You can earn a living believing in people. That I take the risk to believe in you. If you fail, I have nothing to lose. But if you succeed, I will become part of the foot soldiers that believed in you until you're rising. There are people today, whether they do business or not, the truth is that they have done the business of risking their credibility to believe in those rising. And fortunate for them, it worked. It worked. Are we together? It worked too. Some of you don't believe in anybody you run away from people while you are checking with the side of your eye. Once you see a crown on their head, you run and come and say, remember I was here. They say, no, sir, that is fraud. Show me the sign of blood from my tears. Show me the nails, the sign of nails. Did you help me carry the cross? Let me tell you this. Make up your mind that you will start believing in people. As you come for koinonia, you may see others, no car, no nothing, but they are shouting amen every day. You see them rising. Don't laugh at them. Oh. 
the day fire falls on their head in one month they will come and testify and say i got a job somebody did whatever and you tell them sir that man that helped you do you know he's the one i've been trying to give a contract to and you say i don't know you i don't know you joshua selman i know Are we together? And let me say this with all due respect. Even for men of God, don't appear in the life of a successful man and just call him your son. What did you do in his life? Don't show up in the life of people and just claim a stake. They are not idiots. They may respect you, but they are not stupid. They know where the anointing came from. That's why a lot of people say, can you imagine I did this and nobody came back to me? It's a lie. It's impossible to invest in building people and selflessly and God leaves them and they forget you don't go around stealing sheep and claiming you invested in people as men of God is it not funny how we are we don't call any sick person son we don't call any any person who is having a mental problem son we only pick cherry pick successful people and say you are my son you are my daughter how don't you believe in the person who is sick until he's he's transformed to become a sign and a wonder and he can say i remember when i came i was weak i was in debt like the man of david look you have transformed me to a mighty warrior we become your foot soldiers you will never be hungry not when we are standing let me tell you the truth and i submit to you there are people even preachers who have spent their lives investing in lifting people today that those people are lifted no matter what you say those people will die defending the ones who were there for them relationships are investments don't waste it some of you see our little children and push them away you are pushing your house you are pushing breakthrough you are pushing a, a position for your children mutual respect is the way of the wise are we together i'm showing you a road map today i have learned this from people and god has placed wonderful senior mentors and people in my life and one of the advice they gave me i've seen it in their lives that they spend their lives investing in quality relationship you will never mention any ministry in nigeria that they don't have someone there someone they raised someone they blessed someone they fed when he did not have food now he's a governor now he's working somewhere and he can come and say i'm still your boy yo. they call me excellency but i'm still your boy what do you want me to do please give this person a job consider it done to you is a sign and a wonder to them is a destiny they programmed listen leave koinonia tonight with this consciousness start programming your 2025 don't allow it to come and meet you alone don't allow your heaven to be brass and your earth iron because you ignore people as pastors respect people don't look down on them just because they are listening to you god is working on them god is lifting them if you are a rich man today respect those who are coming because you don't know you have reached your plateau but the people who are rising you don't know how far they will go are we together now if there is anything i've learned is that relationships are investments if people really matter to you then invest in their lives if you don't invest in their lives don't claim they matter to you and stay away from their success when god leaves them because you have no stake there hallelujah praise the name of the lord there are people today i don't expect them to take me so serious because i cannot remember making any kind of direct strategic investment in their lives i didn't make any investment in that kind of relationship it would be stupid of me to expect certain levels of returns Whatever I get, I'm grateful because that spells the kind of investment I made. But there are relationships that were intentional. They are still intentional. God brought somebody to learn. All your destiny helpers are around you. They are not yet destiny helpers, but they will be destiny helpers tomorrow. Don't ignore them. That house boy in your house, don't ignore them. That lady washing your plate, don't ignore them. They may not have money now, but they are listening to the word every day. God is lifting them every day. That neighbor, pay attention to people. Scatter your seeds. Give a portion to seven, yea to eight. You do not know the disaster that shall come upon the earth. Are we together now? You see somebody, good afternoon, sir. 
Oh, you are an architect. Oh, God bless you. Something falls on the ground. Let me pick it for you, sir. You may think it does not matter. One day he will look at you among the crowd and say, you are looking for a job. I remember you. What did you study? You will say, I'm even ashamed to say it. Say it doesn't matter. You were the one who were kind to me in Koinonia. Come, you have the job now. I can tell you testimonies of people and I say that with all humility. And I thank all of you here who have given people jobs because they belong to this family in addition to their competence. On their behalf, I'm saying God bless you. But there have been people, they didn't have to do any interview. The moment they mentioned Koinonia, I said that's it. Provided the value you can, you can do all of that, come on board may your name be a key not a padlock yeah. i say it to you as i ask you to stand now may your name be a key and not a padlock yeah. that if your name has locked the door of destiny over your children lock the door of destiny over everyone that the, when people want to succeed they have to deny you to succeed they can't tell people they know you because the moment they mention your name a door that was open becomes closed i pray for you whatever has made your name a padlock may mercy scatter that padlock now in the name of jesus the roadmap next time you see god lift people and and you see people succeed in the kingdom don't say it was a mistake these are the kingdom principles among others for tonight i did a troubleshooting for you across these various areas of your life go back and listen to this message again point out where you have not been practicing it or where you have not found light add more materials to it and pray in the spirit and watch your life rise as for me this journey has begun with the Holy Ghost. This journey has begun with a de in destiny. It is from glory to glory. From glory to glory. This I'm, I'm speaking to myself now. It is from glory to glory. Never having a better yesterday. In the name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth in one minute and begin to give God praise for what you have heard tonight. A thought provo provoking examination of your true state Take time to pray. The roadmap. The roadmap to excellent spirituality. The roadmap to transformation. The roadmap to health and vitality. The roadmap to purpose, destiny. The roadmap to financial vitality. The roadmap to strategic pro destiny relationships. Bible says narrow is the way, straight is the way, narrow is the way. Very few people go there and yet it leads to life. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Go ahead and pray. Thank God for what you have heard and pray for grace tonight. I obtain grace, I obtain grace, I obtain grace. Someone pray, I obtain grace. To be vibrant spiritually, to contend for transformation. To be healthy and physically vibrant. To walk in purpose, to walk in my destiny. I obtain grace to excel financially. I obtain grace to invest in strategic relationships. In Jesus' mighty name we pray.